Okay, I'm going to show you a quick demo on how you can use uh, new features of Jamon 2.78 to uh, track multiple JVM statistics and view them all from the Jamon War. And that could be a distributed application or possibly your whole company's uh, uh, multiple web applications. And you can just use the Jamon web app to view all the different um, statistics. Uh, in previous versions, you could not do that. Okay, um, here I have uh, Tomcat running on locally on port 8081 and Jetty running Jetty 9 running on port 8080. Um, these could be, they, they have to be on my machine, but it could, would work just as well if um, these run separate machines. So I've installed the Jetty handler, which allows me to um, track HTTP requests. And so let's look at these right now. For every page request I get, um, I'll have an all pages uh, hit along with time, um, min, max, these are in milliseconds. Um, if any pages are currently running, that's active. The maximum number of pages that we're running. Um, and other, you know, first time it was pages accessed last time. And you can see you not only have it for all pages, but for each specific page, as well as the bytes sent and and status codes. Here we only have a 200 status code so far. So let me do a refresh page and you'll see all those numbers go up by one. This is aggregation where you have five hits averaging 29 milliseconds. Um, but you can also look at the actual um, invocations. You do that by clicking on a FIFO buffer which keeps track of the last N. In this case um, I believe default is 50 um, invocations. So let's do this again and do a refresh and you can see we're up to a few more pages go back in here and for every page request we have even these um, you'll see a new uh, page is added one kind of cool thing about this too is you can let me go back uh, let me just throw an exception um, this record won't exist so this will be wrong exception there and if we go back here um, first of all, we see a 500 error here, and we also have a servlet exception. Jamon tracks exceptions. Um, if we would like, we can just track um, the last n number of exceptions, and so I'll do this again. Oops. Let me pick again a number that doesn't exist. Get the exception. And here, if I go back to this now, I can actually look at stack traces online. So um, that's pretty handy. Not only is Jamon for performance, but for actually just seeing what kind of what's happening in your application in general. Okay, so uh, let me go back, and I want to generate a few more things with my data. I have page hits, so I showed you the HTTP uh, capabilities of Jamon, but let's quickly go over um, Log4j and also SQL. Uh, let me do log4j first. Jamon comes with a uh, JSP that generates log4j data. So let's just run it. And now let me go back here and let me just filter by log4j. Okay, so you can see for every um, debug or error or fatal message called by log4j, I track um, the number of invocations. Uh, which is pretty handy. And in addition, you can track um, the actual message. So it's kind of like a tail for uh, your log4j messages. You don't have to do this, but it's kind of handy. You can see every time there's an error called, I can actually see the stack trace um, or any additional information associated with that error. And now let's go see the uh, SQL data. So let's, well, Jamon also comes with the ability to generate uh, SQL um, queries mainly just for demo purposes. So let's go do that now. Um, so it ran a bunch of uh, queries against a local um, database and through some exceptions too. So let's go back and look at them. Um, you'll see it tracks uh, JDBC calls. Here's execute query. Um, specific SQL exceptions that are thrown. It will count those. Um, prepared statement, create statement, whether you close your connections and statements, it tracks. Um, 
What's really handy is you can actually see a prepared statement reuse count, and actually every individual query will be a track to um, how long it took, um, etc. This is for each individual select, and this is for all queries like selects, deletes, etc. This is just selects. And finally, um, this is, does not come by default, but you can track how many times each table is referenced in a query. Um, so this one, system tables, was referenced in two uh, different queries. So now let me go to the Tomcat server. That, this one I won't do quite as many things on. Um, just, just to show you what the data looks like, um, it's pretty minimal. Um, but now from either one of these servers, I can actually not only look at the local, what, what's in this particular JVM, but also um, the different members of my cluster. So this particular one, 5701, um, is my Jetty server, and then this one, 5702, oh, is my um, Tomcat server. So by selecting these different values, right now I can pick the Jetty server, you'll see that I'm actually going to be looking at all of the, the data from that we just generated. And let me just select listeners. Um, that, uh, for example, the buffers we added, we added um, different ones, but all pages, I go in there, and even though this could be on a different computer, I can look at all that data, such as the stack traces and the page requests that I had made. And let me go back um, and do it for, well, the log4j data is there. And everything else would be too, but um, let me just go into the stack trace because we had generated that also. And there you go. Okay, let me show you how I configured this. Let's go and look at the config files that allowed us to do the HTTP monitoring. It's very simple. Uh, you just, for Tomcat, you just put um, the name of the Jamon Tomcat valve there and, and, it, and it takes care of all your monitoring. And for Jetty, you just do the similar thing, but you have a handler in Jetty. So um, this is documented elsewhere in the Jamon website, but uh, pretty straightforward. And then let's go and look for where we put the jar files. Um, Tomcat, um, well, first of all, we put the gentleman war in the web apps directory. And we drop the jars. If you just want to use gentleman alone, you just can drop this jar. If you would like to use distributed gentleman, you can drop the Hazelcast jar, which is a distributed hash map. Um, and if you would like to kind of change off the defaults of how often you want Jamon to save to Hazelcast, you can uh, put the Jamon properties file. I called it back BAK because I'm not using it. And then if you have, want to configure Hazelcast, say for example, which servers are in your cluster, etc., cetera, um, you would put Hazelcast XML here. Um, again, I didn't use that, so I just renamed it to back. But those are the four files that you would like to interact with. And then Server XML is where you would put the information about the Tomcat valve. I think it's in the server XML file. So that would be it for Tomcat. And you have similar steps for Jetty, um, just different directories um, for uh, the, the jars. You put them in lib ext. You can see I have Hazelcast Jamon 278. But you don't put your Hazelcast XML or your Jelmon properties file in the, this directory. You put that in the resources directory, which is here. And again, I didn't use them. I just put call them BAK, but that's where they would go. And then finally, you install your web app. Just drop Jelmon war in the web apps directory. That's the distributed capabilities of Jelmon. I hope you enjoy it, and happy monitoring. Thanks.